Hello, my name is Dante Renee, and welcome to the Ten Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Like tonight's film, this is 1984's Hannah D., the girl from Vondell Park. Hannah D., the girl from Vondell Park, and this was put out by Severin uh, some years ago. And I believe it's out of print. It was put out in 2009 by Severin Films. But this is from 1984. And this is the back of the DVD here. Get some uh, screenshots. And it says in the front here, An extreme exploitation gem. Tons of nudity, graphic sex, and some of the sleaziest scenes in cinema history. This is Hannah D., the girl from Vondell Park, right here. This is directed by Axel Berger, a.k.a. Reno Dill Silvestro, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, who I believe also did uh, Werewolf Women. Yes, he did. And uh, Women in Cell Block 7 as well. Uh, we have some people in here from Black Emmanuel, from Rats Night of Terror, so keep your eyes peeled. Let's get into this film here, folks. Wow. Hannah D was filmed, it says, in Amsterdam, and uh, you really get that sense as you're watching the movie. Uh, you see the windmills, um, you see... Uh, kind of the storefronts, the cityscapes. Um, the whole film is very cloudy and dreary. Um, <coughs> all the different modes of transportation. Sorry, I have a little whistle in my throat or something. All the different modes of transportation in the film. Uh, we're on a train for a little bit. Uh, we are in the, you know, like a, a glass boat. Um, there's a hockey game that we're kind of like in an interior mall environment. We're at a boat dock. Um, all of these different locations and you really, you know, also this kind of abandoned wasteland of, uh, d decaying structures and alleyways and fire pits and, um, just total grimy, real abandoned buildings and, uh, I mean, like seeming crack house looking places. Hannah D., you know, continues that vibe for the duration of the film. I mean, the whole vibe is dreary. Um, you know, the sun is never pouring out in this film. Uh, just perpetually cloudy. Now, the interesting thing is, is that when Hannah D. first starts, it really brings you into the storyline in a very unique fashion. Um, when this movie starts, you get kind of confused because you assumed something at the beginning of the movie that, rightfully so, you assumed it. And things start to unravel and you really get thrown headfirst into the deep end of Hannah D's story. Now, in this film, we have um, kind of prostitution, white slavery, drug addiction, uh, heroin, acid, uh, women in prison uh, vibes. Um... We have rape, we have kind of uh, just uh, destruction of the innocent, of the vulnerable, uh, we have uh, family dysfunction, we have uh, all of these different aspects in here, just decay and... and um, everything dark in human existence in in the underbelly uh the underground of human society um with you know uh, just all of it in there uh control and power over uh a girl um emptiness 
hopelessness, despair, uh, feeling alone, feeling lost in the world. It's all here in Hannity. This is a very dreary film. This is a very disturbing film, uh, not only kind of physically, but also psychologically and in, in vibe. Also in this film, we have um, romance as well. And the way that the film plays with you at the beginning is the same way it plays with you with the romantic aspect of the film that's really in two pieces. And it's within one of those two pieces that you get played with. And there's this aspect of love amidst decay. Uh, love and lust and syphilis and, um, you know, uh, heroin addiction, and, um, you know, much like uh, this, the film Train Spotting, also coming off of addiction and trying to withdraw from it, it's all here. Um, we have kind of the, the, the sleazy underbelly of the side streets and, and kind of talking to the drug dealers and talking to uh, all the uh, prostitutes together. Hannity. Now we have musically in this film, the music was from Luigi Seccarelli. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I've never, I believe I've ever heard his name before. The music in here is primarily synth driven. And in the, in this being synth driven, um, there's the, the the atmosphere and the feeling of the synth music in this film uh, feels like late night hopelessness, sleazy, but emotional, emotional sleaze, dark sadness, and even pieces of quirky mystery and darkness. We even have piano in this film as well that's almost like a waltz at one point. We also have um, love songs in this film with lyrics and a very... You know, I looked at a film on this YouTube page, uh, Christina Applegate's first film called Streets. So check that video out if you haven't seen it already. Hannah D reminded me of Streets in a lot of ways um, in terms of, you know, the prostitution and um, family dysfunction and where the prostitution came from, um, how it was born, so to speak, through a family, and also, um, also love. And... Um, the meeting of two different worlds in a way, um, you know, kind of the normal, more um, healthy, uh, affluent society versus, you know, uh, uh, the underbelly, uh, hopelessness and despair of um, the sex trade. Uh, and, uh, you know, th just this whole, this whole vibe going on here and the two worlds colliding. I mean, I'm not going to talk about Julia Roberts' uh, Pretty Woman, but, uh, you know, Hannah D would be um, really meeting those two worlds of a guy who um, is from, you know, a stable section of society, you know, a job, money, a place to live, food to eat, and just stability stability and you know uh, is it possible to have a relationship with a uh, young prostitute now Hannah D stylistically you know we're really as I mentioned the way the film looks we all we also have some plays with focus in this film when scenes end a play with you know things kind of going out of focus uh, we also have uh, reflections in this movie reflections in water I believe and um, there are, you know, distant shots. There are shots of, of Amsterdam and the, kind of the environment, um, shots of movement in the film. And, um, you know, in some ways it almost feels like a documentary sometimes of uh, kind of these street people. And, um, I mean, just... The film drips 
disturbing sleaziness. I mean, this film is sleaze. Um, you know, we have depression in here, uh, suicidal tendencies, and just total hopelessness and despair. Um, really uh, kind of... Uh, as the film goes on, all of a sudden things become more graphic. Uh, now we do have we have full nudity in this film uh, from a girl who looks underage, uh, just with her body. Uh, we do have hairy armpits in this film, by the way, uh, for the ladies, uh, of uh, you know, with the girls in the film. Um, we have simulated sex scenes that are simulated in a way that would be, you know, looked at as realistic in the kind of an X-rated film. Um, so not your typical softcore simulated scenes, if you catch my drift, but no real sex evident in the film at all. Um, that said, we have uh, a real thing being taken out of a girl's butthole. I'm just going to say that. It sucker punches you in this movie, and holy crap. Um, we <laughs> That was real. Um, lots of uh, shots of, of, of people's hands kind of caressing around the vagina. Very, very uh, sleazy scenes with panties in this film. Upskirts, panty shots, uh, girls' legs, and kind of the... Um, you know, the the young girl, school girl vibes in this film, a uh, uh, school girl her, her holding a doll, different fetishes in this film, um, different um, desires uh, for clients. Um, and then things also are very violent and graphic with the drug use in this film, uh, involving eyeballs and, uh, and, and tongues and scalps and lies. Um, there, there, there's a blanket of lies in this film as well, and, and um, kind of using and abusing not only drugs but also people and uh, kind of uh, making... There's this interesting distinction in the film as well, you know, making movies... And, and getting paid just to be nude versus um, getting paid to have sex. Actually, getting paid to have sex in the streets as a prostitute. Um, so we have all these different aspects in in this film. Um, you know, this is really... If you like your grindhouse sleaze, dark, and disturbing, uh, we have some very interesting conversations in this film that almost feel, like I said before, like a documentary, but al also almost feel um, like a morality tale. And there's, there are even some statements uh, near the end of the film as well that involve um, kind of aspects of, of, of the movie being a morality tale, which was also a sucker punch to me. Uh, the main girl... I mean, this is... this. This is the artwork here. Great artwork. Uh, but the girl actually looks very young. Um, and there's something about her face that just freaks me out. Like her eyes, her stare. Especially when you first meet her at the beginning of the movie. When you're confused and bewildered. And turned on at the same time. Um, there's... There's something very disturbing about her her, her face and the... In, in the um, just her expressions, her eyes, and there's even a dot in, 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 the, in the white of her right eye, I believe, which is interesting, at least for the first half of the film or something. And um, her intensity, her acting, her, um, her hopelessness, um, her tears, her screams of pain, emotional pain and physical pain and, and, and longing, um, her abandonment uh, in sex in, in, and in um, it's just very, very impressive. There's a lot of power. I mean, this is her film. I mean, it's called Her Name. And this movie um, is connecting with her total anguish. And man, is she an awesome actress. Very disturbing sections involving uh, a mother in this film, a, as the back of the, uh, the DVD here says, a, a nude mother. And on the back of the DVD, um, it says, uh, voyeurism, mutilation, sleazy pimps, cheesy love songs, drunk nude mothers. Wow. Um, it says it, this is a, uh, it was filmed on location in Amsterdam, but rescued from a bankruptcy auction in Rome. Really? 
Here it is, folks. 1984's Hannah D, the girl from Vondell Park. Here it is. Holy moly. Wow. That is some dark crap. And I love the way the movie ends um, on this stylistically freeze frame. But I don't want to mention too much about it. But it reminds me of Christina Applegate's film Streets once again. Uh, thank you so much for watching a 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more like this film right here. Please feel free to check out my own personal films at youtube.com slash poopy, P-O-O-P-Y, diarrhea. Uh, you can subscribe there for all the films I've made and all the films I'm still making. Thank you so much and good night.